After I uploaded part one of how I win so many trophies, I reviewed the comments and the video, and I realized that perhaps there were three other things that I could share with you to make you more successful in Football Manager. And let's face it, that's why you've clicked on this video. That's why you're here. We want to win trophies. Let's go and find out how. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome to FM with Old Man Phil. And if you are a brand new visitor, I'm Phil and welcome to the channel. And after I reviewed the original video and went through the comments, I decided that there were possibly three additional things that I should have shared with you. And so in today's part two of why I win so many trophies, we are going to share those three things. And at the end of the video, we are actually going to play our next game in the Middlesbrough save. And hopefully we will see that the system works. Now, I do say hopefully because I'm going to give you an additional tip right at the beginning here. It is possible, no matter how well prepared you are, it is possible in football that the opposition will play out of their skins. And no matter what you do, no matter what changes you make, they are destined to win the match. And it doesn't matter whether they're a big team or a small team. Just as you sometimes will play out of your skin and beat bigger teams, it is possible that opposition teams will, on certain occasions, be just the same and they will have the best game they've ever had and nothing you can do can stop that. Luckily, in FM, this doesn't happen to you very often, but it can happen. And understanding that the opposition can, in fact, actually outplay you on the day is a very important thing to understand at this point. You are not going to win every single game. Sometimes teams... Just play better than you, and you just have to accept that. Also, if you are watching part two and you haven't watched part one, I would suggest that you go back and watch part one first, because a lot of what we're going to talk about in this video might not make any sense to you if you haven't seen part one. And so let's get straight into it. And the first tip we're going to look at today comes from a comment that I received from one of my subscribers. And basically, he was just asking the question, how do I decide which tactic to use against who? So I've thought about that, and then I've added to it, and where do I position the lines for each game? How do I know? And so there is a system for doing this. So let's start off with what tactic that I'm going to use for this game. And so we are going to be playing Huddersfield. And if we look at Huddersfield as an overall team, we can see that they are sitting in 20th in the league. We are top. Would the board, the fans, the media, the bookies expect me to win this game? I think they would. And so I think I would have to be quite aggressive. I'd have to go out and try and win. We're not going to be sitting back and being defensive in this game. We're going to go and try and win it. So basically what we are going to do is play in the high press and so that's an easy decision to make if we are expected to win the game I'm going to be aggressive I'm going to go after them we're going to play in our high press system and try to win the game very early on we're going to play with an attacking mentality we want to try and win it if the team we are playing against are slightly better than us or a lot better than us, then I'm probably going to be playing and starting the game with the low block system just to be a little bit more cautious about how we're playing the game and to conserve energy so that we can mount attacks if necessary later in the game. And we will have saved energy in order to do that. But the real problem will be when we are not sure whether we should be winning this game or whether we are going to be losing this game. Teams that are similar to us, we're not really sure how it's going to go. I'm probably going to start with the low block. Let's err on the side of caution. And if we are winning the game as it proceeds, then we will go more attacking and go out and try and win the game. That's pretty much where I will start off from a tactics point of view. And so where am I going to place the lines? Now, as you can see, my defensive line at the moment is set to a higher defensive line for this tactic, and we are set to a high press. And the idea is we are going to press them high up the pitch. This is a very aggressive pressing tactic. We want to win the ball high up the pitch and create problems in their half. We are not sitting back and waiting for them to come at us in our half. We simply are going to take the game to them. And there are four things that I'm going to consider when deciding 
where I'm going to position my defensive line. Am I going to play with a higher line or am I going to just nudge it back a little and play with a standard line? And the first thing that I'm going to consider about where I'm going to position that line and I'm going to go to my home page and if you don't have this as you're not using a skin, then you can find this in the data hub and go to next opponent and you will find this description in there. And this will tell you that Huddersfield are going to play slightly more cautious mentality at home compared to recent away matches. They're going to play a vertical tiki-taka, which is a quick passing style of possession and movement, narrower, more direct approach than the standard tiki-taka. And so they are probably going to have a team of ball carriers. They are probably going to have a little bit of pace, probably not a great deal, but enough pace to cause me problems. They're probably going to hit direct long balls but they're not going to press me too much, too hard, I don't think. And the reason why I'm considering those four things is because I have to decide, do I want to buy a little bit of time for my defenders? For example, if they are going to run at us and attempt to go past us with using their dribbling skills, do I want to just bring the line back a little bit so that we give ourselves an opportunity to prevent them getting past them, being too high up, it means that we might be vulnerable to them skipping past us. Similarly, if they are a creative team and we don't have the greatest pace at the back, I might want to drop it down a little bit just to avoid these balls over the top. It also means that when they attempt these balls over the top and our defence intercepts those balls, it gives us just that split second to collect the ball, compose ourselves and find a way to distribute it. If we have a higher line and we are under pressure from their forward line at the back, this could cause us to make mistakes. So by just lowering the line a little bit, then that will buy us a little bit more time in order to be a little bit more effective when we regain possession and give us time to compose ourselves and distribute it properly. This is just basically about avoiding mistakes at the back. So now, if they were a really good team, I probably would lower the line. But the way that they play, I have to ask myself, are they good at it? And the answer is they are in 20th position in the league, so they are not very good at it. Are we good at the way we play? Yes, we are, because we are top of the league. And so therefore, I think we should focus more on the way that we play rather than the way the opposition play. Their recent form also confirms that they are actually not doing very well in the style of play that they've chosen to play. And so that's how I'm going to know where to position the defensive line prior to the game. And if I've got it wrong, then not to worry. As we saw in part one of this tutorial, I can always adjust the lines to put it right. So that is how I've decided to set up the tactic and where to position the lines for the game against Huddersfield. If we were playing against a better team who had good dribblers, who were very creative, who were going to play a high press and who have a high degree of pace, then I probably would drop the line down a little bit in order to buy us more time when we actually gain possession in defence. And then I will probably ask the team to step up more. As we are playing with a higher line, I will not ask the team to step up more. And so that is tip number one. How to decide on the tactic and setting up the lines before a match. And that brings us to tip number two. And this is a picture that I've taken off the internet and I hope the person who posted it doesn't mind me using it. But when you actually look at that picture, immediately you're going to say, I just got FM'd. But I don't think like that. If that happens to me, I don't think I got FM'd. I think I managed that game badly and I need to learn lessons from what I just did. And it's very, very easy to get sucked into this. The game is cheating. The game doesn't like me. I think there's major bugs in the game. This shouldn't be happening. All those things that people go through in the anger when this happens to them. But the fact that you are calling it a game means it's just a series of puzzles or challenges. And your job as a manager in this game is to solve the puzzles or challenges. And once you learn how to deal with those puzzles, then it will leave that alone and it will move to even more difficult puzzles or challenges. And that's why I've had to lift one of these off the internet, because I don't see this very often anymore.
The game is not a human being. It does not have a soul. It does not have a personality. It does not hate you. It doesn't even know who you are. It is just a challenge that it has set you. And if you fail the challenge, it will continue to present this to you from time to time. And if we actually look at this picture, you can understand the feelings that you have been cheated, but you haven't been cheated. Basically, what the game has been telling you is what you are doing is not working. This is not something that happened right at the beginning of the game. This is something that built up over the entire game. So you must have seen this happening probably after 20 minutes, definitely by half time, and most certainly by the time you get to 60 minutes or so. If you have changed nothing throughout this game, then the game is going to continue to do what it's doing and you're going to lose the game. And so tip number two is when you are watching a game, watch as a manager would watch and not as a spectator. Do not get caught up in the emotion. Do not get caught up in this, the game is cheating me as bugs. All those things that people say, I've just got FM'd, it's not fair. Do not get caught up in all that emotional nonsense. Be logical and accept what you're doing. Your tactic against this team is not working and make some changes. And so having watched the first part of this tutorial, you will have three tactics now which your team are trained in and are very familiar with. You only need to change the tactic until you find the one that works. You may also need to adjust the lines from time to time, but eventually, if you do enough, you will win the game. But there is something that you definitely should not do. If you are playing in this system, let's say you are playing with a positive mentality and you find yourself in that position and you've made a change, do not panic. Do not suddenly start saying, OK, we're going to play him as an advanced playmaker. If you look at what has happened now, you have reduced the familiarity on how they play. Just changing roles and pushing people into more forward positions is going to confuse your team. They are now not very familiar at playing this, and so they are going to be in trouble. You're expecting them to take on a brand new tactic and within five minutes learn how to use it. It's not going to happen. That's why we set up the three systems so that we could use the system that we already have, which they are already familiar with. And so do not be tempted to change player roles, to change things at random, thinking that it is going to help your team. It is not. You have to have your tr team trained to be very familiar with the tactic that they are using. If they're not familiar with it and you ask them to do something, they're not going to be able to do it. And so just chucking players further up the pitch is not going to help your cause at all. That's why we have the three systems already in place, which they know how to play. And so that is tip number two. Watch the game as a manager and not as a spectator and make correct changes. And don't confuse your team by changing their roles, team instructions and throwing them up the pitch just out of desperation. That's why we have the three tactics, so that we can change this way we are playing very, very simply and without fuss. And that brings me on to tip number three. And when I was playing in the live stream the other day, what actually happened was we were on a very good run. We were playing against Manchester United. We were extreme underdogs, but we had gone a goal behind and then we had fought our way back. We had made changes, fought our way back to 1-1. I went into the low block to consolidate the result, and in the 93rd minute or something, this happened. <laughs> and then, the following day, and playing through the Middlesbrough save, we had the biggest game of our season. We were in the FA Cup quarter-final against rivals Newcastle from the Premier League. And at the beginning of the game, it didn't take me long to realise that things were not working, so I made a change and went into the low block. And then this happened. <laughs> and 
And so I had made terrible errors. We finally lost both games by two goals to one. But if we have a look at how the high press and the low block are set up, you can see that in the high press, we have a higher line of defence. And that is mirrored in the low block, where also we will have a higher line of defence. Now, bearing in mind that we were playing against teams who were infinitely better than us, who had good dribblers, good pressers, and were very creative players and had lots of pace, both teams possessed this. When I went back into the low block in both games, I forgot to adjust my defensive line. And when I went back in both games to the low block, I should have gone to a standard defensive line, stepped up more, and I'm willing to bet if I'd remembered to do that in the heat of the moment, we would have come out of both games with either a draw or a win. The fact is, I forgot to do it. And once I'd forgotten to do it, both my defenders got themselves under pressure, made errors, and we lost goals as a result. I need to learn from that. And so tip three is basically learn from your mistakes. And I am not going to make that mistake again anytime soon. And so there we are. Three things that we need to do in addition to the seven that we thought about in tutorial one. Once you're able to do all 10 of these things, then playing this game will become a breeze. More trophies will be won. And hey, that's why we're here, to win more trophies. And in part three, we are going to do a part three. What we're going to do is to go through the whole process and we will then play the game against Huddersfield and we will see how that process actually works in practice. And we'll go through the game step by step, adjusting things just to see that this process actually works does work. But we got to hope that they don't have one of those days where everybody plays a blinder and no matter what we do doesn't make any difference. But I'm pretty sure we can feel very confident against Huddersfield. So join us in part three tomorrow and we'll see how the whole 10 things work and how the process fits together. And that's it for this video. If you are brand new to the channel and you like FM content and you love to see people suffer playing this game, well, you are definitely in the right place. So why not subscribe, like, watch, comment, do all that good stuff and help the channel to grow and help us to support the very worthwhile cause that you can see scrolling above. I did set this channel up to help support the work of the British Heart Foundation. And all that remains to be said now is stay safe, take care, and hopefully we will see you in part three where it all comes together.